Shabbat Shalom, Body of Messiah, Mark Cooley here with Yahweh Yeshua Assembly in Fort Myers, Florida, bringing you another teaching from Yahweh's laws and commandments. You know, it just might be that this summer I may do more teaching inside the house than outside, just because it is so humid already outside, and maybe it's getting older, but don't like that humidity or that heat. But nonetheless, I pray you had a good week. I pray this being the Shabbat, that you have a great Shabbat, that you keep it separated and set apart. So basically what we're going to go over today is your willingness to keep the Shabbat, the Sabbath. Now this teaching is not for those that have excuses, reasons, justifications for not willing to keep the Sabbath or the Shabbat in Hebrew. But this is for those that are willing to keep the Shabbat and to keep it separated unto Yahweh and that you would do as the scripture leads you, as the Ruach leads you in celebrating the Sabbath. Now, basically, we know that the Shabbat is a day of rest. And if we turn to Genesis chapter 2, Yahweh created the heavens and the earth. <clears throat> and then starting in verse 3, it says, and Elohim blessed the seventh day and separated it. So it says here that after Yahweh created the earth, that he separated the seventh day and he rested from all his work on it, which Elohim had created to make. And then it says, these are the generations of the heavens and of the earth when they were created in the day of the making of Yahweh Elohim's earth and heavens. And then it goes into, and every shrub of the field was not yet on the earth. Every plant of the field had not yet sprung up. For Yahweh Elohim had not sent rain on the earth and there was no man to till the ground. So we see here that in the very beginning Yahweh set apart the seventh day. Of the seven days, and they weren't named Monday, Tuesday, Sunday, Wednesday, Saturday, they were they were named by numbers. The first day, the second day, you can read Genesis 1. It says on the first day Yah created on the second day, Yah created. On the third day, Yah created. And the other thing to notice is that the day began at sundown and then went to the 24-hour day, began at sundown, and then it went to the following sundown. It did not go like we have been taught from morning to morning. It's from sundown to sundown. So a day in biblical terms is from sundown to sundown. So the seventh day Sabbath is from Friday sundown to Saturday sundown. And at, at the seventh day Saturday, for lack of um, better word, um, the seventh day sundown is the beginning of the first day. So. We need to see that Yahweh, in the beginning, created the seventh day set apart Shabbat. The seventh day Sabbath is Yahweh's day, and it is a commandment. Now, let's go to Exodus. And I mean, we probably, all those that are have been in Torah or that have read the Torah 
all those that are Torah observant, you will have read this in Exodus 20. Let's go to verses 8 through 11. And Yahweh is speaking. These are the, the Ten Commandments. And he says, remember the Sabbath day. So the first thing we need to understand is this is the only scripture in all of Torah, in all of Genesis to Revelation, that Yahweh says, don't forget something. What chapter are you in? Exodus 20, oh. verse 8. Um, he said, don't forget, basically, the Shabbat. Why did he say, don't forget the Sabbath? Because he knew we would receive a lot of outside pressure. He knew that we would be in a land full of pagans, whether it was the children of Israel going through all the the ites and Yahweh removing the ites, or whether it be in our day and time. Our whole so society is pagan. It used to be that the weekends, hardly any businesses were open. But nonetheless, we have progressed into lawlessness. We have progressed into worshiping the almighty dollar. And one of the things I want to convey is that there is nothing more important in Yahweh's eyes concerning the Shabbat, the Shabbat. There is nothing more important to him than you keeping the Sabbath. It is making money is not that important. Going to a baseball game is not that important. Making sure your kids are you know, involved in different activities is not as important in Yahweh's eyes as you and your family, your sons and daughters, your business, separating the Sabbath, remembering the Sabbath, remembering what it's about. It's a day of rest. It's a day of worship. It's a day for set apart for Yahweh. So he said, remember or don't forget the Shabbat, to keep it separated, to keep it separated from this world system, because the world system is going to come after you, trying to create circumstances and situations that will lead you into disobeying and not honoring or observing or keeping the Sabbath. Now, all of us have probably done something on the Sabbath, even Torah observant. Oh, I just ordered that on the internet. Oh, Yahweh, forgive me. I just totally spaced it out. Or maybe you went to the store, or maybe you went shopping, or maybe you were conducting business, or whatever the case may be. Or you think in your mind, this is the only day I can get this done. Or for some, they may have to work. But this teaching is about having a willingness to keep the Sabbath separated, to observe the Sabbath, to keep it separated from this world system. And if you are willing, uh, Isaiah 119, if you are willing and obedient, you shall eat the good of the land. If you're willing and obedient, and if you observe to do all that Yahweh has commanded you, then he will be pleased. Now, the key thing is most people are not willing. And some of those that are willing, they yet don't have the faith, the gumption, if you would, the boldness, if you would, to say to their children and to explain to them why they are not going to be participating in any type of activi activities on the Sabbath, or why we are not going to go conduct 
business in the world on the Sabbath. Now, if you want to go to the park with your kids, you know, play around with your kids, just don't conduct any business. You know, don't go to the concession stand. Don't stop and buy gas. Have all that done, uh, prepared ahead of time so that, you know, you can make your sandwiches, take your snacks, your drinks, throw them in the cooler. And if you feel led to and you want to go to the park, you want to go to the beach, you want to go spend the day in the mountains and just walk around and enjoy Yahweh's creation, then so be it. But do not conduct any type of business. Now, if you can put a boat in the water um, or go to the beach without conducting any business, then so be it. But if you have to compromise, even, you know, buy some gas or compromise, in this way, that way, or the other way, don't do it. If you have to pay to launch your boat, you have to pay to park, that's all conducting business. We are not supposed to do that. Now, for me, to play it safe, the scripture says that they stayed in their house. They were not to go out of their house on the Sabbath. So that's what we do. Now, I understand that many of us have our, our gatherings on the Shabbat, but nonetheless, you know, we need to gather, but we need to stay separated. You know, Christianity, and I was part guilty of this as well, when you went to church for two, three hours, whatever it was, then you always went out to eat. Now the scripture says not to do that. Now, it says here, remember the Sabbath day and keep it holy. Six days you shall labor and do all your work. Uh, and the seventh day is the Sabbath to Yahweh. It's not a Jewish Sabbath. It's a Sabbath to Yahweh, your Elohim. You shall not do any work. You, your son and your daughter, your male slave or your slave girl, so that would be employees, your livestock, your stranger who is in your gates. They are not to do any work. Nobody is to do any work. If you go out to eat, if you stop to buy gas, someone is working. And you are keeping them working. Now, I can tell you being a locksmith, the many locksmiths that I used to work for, they shut down on the weekends. They used to be open like half a day on Saturday, but they quit it when there wasn't enough business. So if there's not enough business, people will begin to shut down. And that is a good thing for the Sabbath. Then it says, for in six days, Yahweh made the heavens and the earth, the sea and all that is in them. He rested on the seventh day. On account of this, Yahweh blessed the, seventh, Yahweh blessed the Sabbath day and set it apart. He blessed it and set it apart. And that is what Yahweh did. Yahweh blessed the seventh day. Not man, Yahweh blessed the seventh day, not the first day. Get that, get that, get that. If you are willing to hear and you're willing to listen to what the scripture says, remember in Mark 4, Yahshua said, if you will accept the word, then the word will produce 30, 60, and 100 fold. If you reject it, it's not going to produce anything. If you hold on to your traditions, it's not going to produce anything. But the first step to having a willing heart to obey the Shabbat is to see that Yahweh commands it. Yahweh commanded it to keep the seventh day Sabbath set apart is a command straight from the creator of the universe. Now, the other thing to notice, it is not a suggestion. Mm -hmm. Yahweh did not say, if you can <clears throat> keep, 
keep the Sabbath. Now he just said, keep it. He didn't say, if you can't keep it, that's okay. He did not say that. It is his set apart day. It is his set apart day. It, it's his commandment for those who follow him, serve him, and worship him. So this is only for the people of Israel, those that have been grafted into Israel, those that are serving the Elohim of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Now you may claim as a Christian, or you may claim as a Catholic, that you are serving the, the Elohim of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, but if you're not obeying his commandments, it is just very clear that you are not serving the Elohim of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. You may be serving your own thoughts, your own theologies, man-made traditions, other deities, but you are not serving the Elohim of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. And you need to understand that. I know that that is, you know, difficult to swallow. I know that that is hard to hear and to accept that all these years you thought you were serving Yahweh and his Messiah, his son, but you weren't. You were serving a false deity. Now, the other thing is that the scripture, which we're going to re read here in a minute, reveals that keeping the Shabbat is the evidence, is the proof, and it is the sign that you are serving Yahweh. You are serving the creator of heaven and earth. Exodus 20, verse 19. Or oh, maybe I messed up and wrote down the wrong verse. Um, but I can easily correct myself today because I got my phone, my other tablet, so I can go to it real quickly. I think I wrote down the wrong verse. In Ezekiel, I wrote Exodus. Excuse me, that was my fault. Ezekiel 20. Verses 19 through 20. I'm going to have to go on Facebook and correct, correct that. So people look up Exodus 20 like I did. So this doesn't say nothing about that. Okay, it says in Ezekiel 20, verses 19 through 20. I am Yahweh, your Elohim. Follow my decrees. Be careful to keep my laws and commandments. Keep my Sabbath <coughs> set apart, that they may be a sign between us. Then you will know that I am Yahweh, your Elohim. So Exodus 20, verses 19, 19 to 20 reveals that keeping the Sabbath Keeping the Sabbath set apart is a sign between those that serve Yahweh and those that don't. So it's basically saying that if you don't keep the seventh day Sabbath, you are not part of Israel. You are not serving Yahweh, the Elohim of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. You are not serving the Creator. You are serving some other deity. So it says here that He is Yahweh. You need to follow His laws and commandments. You need to be careful to keep them and observe them and obey them, not the way we would think to, but the way the Scripture says. And there is basically only one or many two um, reasons for not keeping the Sabbath. One, 
you are helping someone that is in dire need of help on the Sabbath. You are blessing them. You are helping them. You're reaching out to them. They had, you know, maybe maybe something happened over in their house or to one of their family members. You're over there assisting them, helping them. They have a leak that's flooding, that's flooding the living room or the kitchen. You're over there helping them turn it off so things are not destroyed. Anytime you are doing good, according to Yahweh, you can um, break the, the Shabbat, the Sabbath. But you can't be looking for that. See, a lot, a lot of people, they'll just look for, oh, I'm just with someone because they're lonely. No, that's not it. You have to have a willing heart to keep the Sabbath. The other day, the other thing is if it's emergency. You know, you can't breathe. You know, you're, you have extreme pain in your heart. Um, you're having a, an attack. You fell down, broke your, your leg, your arm, or whatever. It needs to be, it needs medical attention, so on and so forth. Now, I understand about people that are in, in medicine. You know, they work on the Sabbath, and it's a blessing that they're there when you need them. But nonetheless, if you're Torah observant, you should try to get out of working that day and switch it to another. It is your religious right to tell them that it's against your religious belief to work on the Sabbath. And by law, they have to make an accommodation for you or at least try. So, all right. So then now... Let's go back to one more in Deuteronomy 5. And these are just a few scriptures. And again, what I'm sharing is we are to have a willing heart to keep Yahweh's commandments. It's all about being willing. Now, in my opinion... Going to get me medicine, unless you drastically need it, unless your life is dependent upon it, can wait till the next day. Going to the store to get milk. I mean, it may not be good that, that you didn't plan ahead and had milk, uh, but that can wait as well. You might not be able to have cold cereal or so on and so forth. Now, if your cupboards are bare and you find out your neighbor is totally out of food, you either can bring them some food or you can go buy them some necessity to get them through the day and then, you know, do your main shopping later. But, you know, for me, like l last Friday, my doctor phoned in a prescription. Well, they weren't going to have it ready till after 3, and they closed at 6. So I waited as long as possible, and even, even then I felt so convicted uh, when we went close to 6 o'clock to get that medication. And I didn't even start taking it till Monday because I was researching it. And so that showed me that I did not need to go on that day and I did not keep the Sabbath set apart. So what did I do? 1 John 1 verse 9. If you confess your sin, he is faithful and just to forgive you and cleanse you of all unrighteousness. So, you know, we need to be willing to admit and renounce it and repent of it when we fail to keep the Sabbath. We need to have a willing heart. And if somehow you do break it like I did, then you learn from it and you then make the adjustments in your life. Now, in Deuteronomy 5 verse 12, it says, observe the Sabbath to keep it holy or to keep it set apart. As Yahweh your Elohim 
has commanded you. Six days you shall labor and shall do all your work, and the seventh day shall be a Sabbath to Yahweh your Elohim. You shall not do any work, nor your son, that means no, no, no chores in the house. Um, now, if you're going to run a dishwasher, if you're going to just throw some clothes into the washer, you're not doing any work. The dishwasher is. The laundry is. You know, um, so that's a different story. Nor your slave, nor your female slave, nor your ox, your donkey, your livestock, nor any stranger that is within your gates. So if anyone is part of your business, if anyone is part of your clan, so to speak, and they are, they are not blood-bought and blood-washed in Israel, then they still need to obey the Shabbat. You need not make them work. They are grafted in. They are, if they're, especially if they're following Yahweh's laws and commandments. So what this reveals to us, that he, you're keeping the Sabbath, you go to the restaurant, the restaurant per waitress or waiter and cook, they know nothing about the Sabbath. That is the alien that is dwelling among you. You shall not make them work, the scripture says. So we need to not make the grocery clerk work, the pharmacist work, the other person now if it's an emergency then <clears throat> you know don't stay home <coughs> excuse me don't stay home you know especially if you're having something serious like a broken bone or you can't breathe or covid or something like that so it says nor your stranger that is within your gates so that our male slave and your female slave may rest like yourself. So, you know, employees, the people in the restaurants, in the grocery store, your Walmarts, your gas stations, that's why the scripture teaches not to do any business because you're having a hand in breaking, that have a hand in them breaking the Sabbath. It is time, as we begin to close, to return to Yahweh's laws and commandments. If you are willing and obedient, Isaiah 119, if you are willing and obedient, you shall eat the good of the land. If you are willing and obedient to keep the Sabbath, if you are willing and obedient to know his name, if you are willing and obedient for any other commandment, anything that Yahweh's laws and commandments say, and you keep them, you observe them, then you'll be blessed. <clears throat> and the scripture says that keeping the Sabbath is proof, is evidence, is the sign that you are serving Yahweh. So if you're not keeping it, and you, you don't have a willing heart to keep them, then it is quite clear you are serving other Elohims. You are serving not the creator of heaven and earth. I know that might be a slap in the face and you might not want to hear it, but nonetheless, it's the truth. The next thing that you and I need to learn to do is take a stand for what is commanded in the scriptures. And we're talking about the Sabbath. So you need to step out in faith and take a stand to obey Yahweh's laws and commandments concerning the set apart Sabbath. How you take a stand is by taking a stand with your family, by taking a stand with your employer, by taking a stand with your, your friends, and not to get involved in things that Yahweh said that you are not to do 
on the Shabbat. Now, going to a family gathering on the Sabbath, I don't see anything wrong with that. Now, if you're going and you're to a birthday party and they're blowing out candles and they're making wishes and they're bringing presents, all those things are pagan, have pagan roots. Now, knowing the birthday, honoring the birth of someone is not pagan or, you know, you know, this is your 30th wedding anniversary, R recognizing it, it's not pagan. What becomes pagan is what you do with it. What you do with it. If you do the things that the customs of this world do in celebrating birthdays, anniversaries, Mother Days, Father Day, nothing wrong with honoring, and you should honor your mother, you should honor your, honor your father, just don't do it on the pagan days that pagans do it. Do it all the time. So we need to learn to take a bold stand. And that means you may have to go to your boss and tell him that, you know, for spiritual reasons, according to the scripture, that the Creator has commanded you not to work on the seventh day, beginning Friday sundown to Saturday sundown. And just explain it to him. Be courteous, be loving, be kind, don't be ugly, and then let it up to him. And just pray that Yahweh would soften his heart. Now, the thing is, you just can't expect Yahweh to do it for you. You can't expect Yahweh to do it for you. There's a part that you have to play in keeping the Sabbath day set apart. You have to go, and you have to take a stand of faith. You have to be bold, and you have to talk to those that you need to talk to. Your friends, your family, your employer, you know, so on and so forth. And explain to people without condemnation why you will not be participating in Christmas, why you will not be participating in Easter, and so on and so forth because Yahweh commands it. It's time to return to Yahweh's commandments, to Yahweh's laws and commandments. I'm reading my notes here, sorry. And this is not a suggestion, as we talked about earlier. And Yahweh did not say, now if you can't keep them, that's okay. He did not say that. The scriptures reveal it is evidence or a sign that you serve Yahweh. The bottom line is if you are willing to observe and keep the Shabbat set apart, if you are not willing to observe and keep the Sabbath set apart, you don't serve the Elohim of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. You serve some other deity. I know this is a shock. I remember when I saw that, I said, oh my. It's time to return to Yahweh's laws and commandments and be willing to obey him. That's the key. Be willing to obey him. And then everything else will fall into place. Take a stand by faith for the scriptures. You can change your present circumstances. Yes, you need to pray and ask Yahweh for his grace, his mercy, his power, his help, his favor, as you talk to family, as you explain to family, as you go to your employer, so on and so forth. But it's up to you to start obeying. It's up to you to be willing. It's up to you to start doing something to change your circumstances. It's just not about, well, you know, I prayed and I'll see if Yahweh does anything about it. No, 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 no. And also, be willing to admit, you have not been obeying his word. You have not been keeping his Sabbath. Or if you have been and you messed up like I did last, last uh, Shabbat, then be willing to admit it 
repent of it, excuse me, and Yahweh will cleanse you of all unrighteousness. Obedience to Yahweh's commandments is more important than anything else. It is more important than going to the assembly. It is more important than pleasing your family. It is more important than making your children happy. It is more important than pleasing your spouse. It is more important than obeying even the government. Obeying Yahweh's laws and commandments has to be the priority and you have to do everything you can possibly do. This is what Paul meant in Philippians 4.13 when he said, all things, actually that was Yeshua. Um, Yeshua said, all things are possible, Mark 9.23, to him that believes. All things are possible. And then what Paul said in Philippians 4.13 is, I can do all things. Through the Messiah, through his anointing, who strengthens me? He didn't say, Yahweh can do all things. Well, we know that. He said, you can do all things. I can do all things. So the emphasis is on you and I, we're having to do things that maybe we don't want to do, or we don't have the boldness to do, or we're not willing to step out in faith and walk on the water to go to the Messiah, to go to Yahweh, where when it looked impossible, we're not willing to do that. See, it's up to you and I to step out of the boat, like it was up to Peter to step out of the boat when Yahshua said, come. When Yahweh said to obey the Sabbath, it's up to you and I to step out of the boat and obey him. It's up to you and I to, to pray and to build up our inner man, to go and talk with our employer. And to talk with, you know, family members, sons, daughters, grandkids, grandchildren, brothers, sisters, aunts, uncles, yeah, most of them are going to think you're nuts. Most of them are going to think you're being legalistic. But here, let's go. <clears throat> let's go all the way to Colossians chapter 2. Colossians chapter 2. I'm going to pull this up on my phone real quick. Oh, matter of fact, it was there. Colossians chapter 2. And let's see if you really need to start reading in verse 8. It says, Beware, lest any man spoil you through philosophy and vain deceit, after the tradition of men, after the rudiments of the world, and now after the Messiah. What this is saying, these are the traditions the ordinance says, decrees, commandments of men. This is not referring to Yahweh's laws and commandments. All right. Now, if you drop on down again in verse 14, where it says blotting out the handwriting of ordinances that was contrary to us, which was taken out of the way, nailing it to the stake. What is he talking about? He's not talking about Yahweh's laws and commandments. The ordinances are the same ordinances that we found in verse 8. The ordinances are the sins, the iniquities, the transgressions, the curses, the poverty, the sickness, the diseases, as well as the ordinances, uh, uh, the ordinances or the commandments of men. So the commandments of men, the sins, the iniquities, the transgressions, the curses, the poverty, the sickness, the diseases, was taken out of the way and nailed to the stake. Not Yahweh's laws and commandments. That just doesn't make any sense. The redemption is from our sins, from having to obey man's law, the philosophies 
and the rudiments of this world that would try to spoil you or to keep you from obeying Yahweh's laws and commandments, which are um, the rudiments are the man's laws, Yahweh, Yahshua, nailed it to the stake. And then when it says, having spoiled principalities and powers, he made a show of them openly triumphing over them in it. It is not talking about just demon spirits, but it's talking about natural authorities behind these man-made ordinances. Get it? Verse 15 is talking about natural authorities behind these man-made ordinances, the rabbis' oral ordinances. Then it says, Let no man therefore judge you in meat or in drink or in respect of a holy day or of the new moon or of the Sabbath day. What it's saying is, don't let, because he's talking to the people in Colossians who were pagan worshipers that just came out of paganism. And he's saying, don't let anybody that is still in paganism judge you or condemn you because you are no longer a pagan sun god worshiping Gentile. But now you are in Yahshua, the Messiah, and you are learning to live a biblical new lifestyle where you obey Yahweh's laws and commandments. So he's not saying you, you shouldn't obey the Sabbath or you shouldn't keep the Sabbath, observe the Sabbath, or observe a set-apart day, a feast day, or a moon day, or what you eat or what you drink. He's not saying you shouldn't do these things. He's saying if people condemn you for obeying them, he said, don't worry about it. Shrug it off. Resist it. Rebuke it. Come against it. <clears throat> because they are oper operating through verse 8. Let's read verse 8 again. They are operating through um, the traditions and the ordinances and the de decrees and the commandments of men, not Yahweh's laws and commandments. And they are trying to spoil you. They are trying to deceive you into not obeying Yahweh's laws and commandments. So here, when you read this in context, this is what Paul is saying. And back to verse 17, it says, which are a shadow of things to come. What are a shadow of things to come? One, the Sabbath. Two, the feast days. Three, the, the new moon. Or you could put it this way, Yahweh's laws and commandments. They are a shadow of things on this earth that when the new Jerusalem comes down, this earth is going to be ran by Yahweh's laws and commandments. And the people living in it will either obey Yahweh's laws or, and commandments, or they're going to suffer great, severe consequences. So, it says here that these are a shadow of things to come. Now, not obeying Yahweh's laws and commandments are not a shadow of things to come. If you think you're going to spend eternity with the Elohim of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, and that he is not going to have us obey his laws and commandments, and that you will be able to participate in the kingdom by not obeying Yahweh's laws and commandments, you have another thing coming. The Apostle Paul even said in Galatians 5, that if you practice the works of the flesh, I'm paraphrasing, you will not enter into the kingdom of Yahweh. Impossible. Yahweh will not accept it. So when you and I are willing to keep the Sabbath, and that's what we're talking about, it's going to be a sign that you serve Yahweh. It's going to be a sign to the world that you are obeying his laws and commandments, or at least attempting to start obeying Yahweh's laws and commandments. And as you continue 
obeying Yahweh's laws and commandments, as you continue to step out in faith at work and say, no, I'm not going to participate in exchanging gifts. I'm not going to part and explain why I'm not going to participate in dressing up on Halloween and explain why I'm not going to. This is all evidence to the people that you work with that you are obeying Yahweh's laws and commandments. When you simply explain it, that it goes against Yahweh's laws and commandments, the more they see you obeying Yahweh's laws and commandments, the more they see you stepping out in faith and being bold about it, the more of a witness you will be to them of, of Yahweh, for Yahweh, and for his laws and commandments. And the more they will be drawn by the Ruach into those things, into Yahweh's laws and commandments, into being part of the nation of Israel, into being born from above. See, most people have never been taught that when you are serving the Elohim of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, when you have been born from above, the next step is to start learning about Yahweh's laws and commandments and start repenting of all the paganism that you were involved in, all the darkness of this world system that you were involved in, and start learning Yahweh's instructions, Yahweh's Torah. Not what Christianity says, not what some people have twisted in the New Testament to say, that Yahweh doesn't say, and always remember this, that it, everything in the new has to line up from the original covenant. And if something Paul said, something Peter said, something James said, or any other apostle said that causes you confusion, put it on the shelf. Because all you really need is what the Messiah said, the Messiah, how the Messiah lived, and what is written in the Torah, what is written in his laws and commandments. So here's a train of thought. If Paul said something, you need to learn what Paul could not have meant by, by what he said. And he could not have meant to transgress the commandments. He could not have meant to disobey the commandments. He could not have meant to change anything written in the Torah to no longer be in the Torah, to no longer be in the scriptures in what man calls the New Testament, because that did not exist when Paul was sharing what he shared. So you need to learn what Paul could not have meant. That is just as important as learning what possibly Paul meant, because some things Paul uh, meant it's hard to discern, but it's easier to, to discern when you know the foundation of the Torah, when you know what the commandments say, it's easy to discern what Paul could not have meant. He could not have meant that it's okay to eat unclean food. He could not have meant that it's okay to have other gods before you. It could not have meant that it's okay to participate in the customs of this world system. It could not have meant, he could not have meant that it's okay to worship other deities and to serve other deities on Christmas and all these other pagan holidays. He could not have meant that it's okay to worship on the unconquerable day of the sun that was going on way before Yeshua even went to the, to the stake. He could not have meant those things. And when you understand what he could not have meant, it makes clear what, at least in part, what he meant. Now, <clears throat> if something, like I said, James said, Paul said, Peter said, causes you confusion, just put it on the shelf. I remember years ago when I was in Christianity, uh, a, a brother, Papa Hagen, who we listened to a lot, he made a statement, he said, eat the hay and spit out the sticks. If you have a hard time understanding something, just put it on the shelf and just eat the meat. In the same way, 
if you're having a hard time with something in, quote unquote, the renewed covenant, just put it on the shelf and eat what the Torah says and eat what the Messiah says. And understanding and clarity will come, especially if you get the understanding, enlightenment, and revelation of what Paul could not have been saying, what Peter could not have been saying, what James could not have been saying. And when you do that study, it will bring revelation to you concerning whatever it is you're studying. So we have to have a willing heart to obey the Shabbat, the Sabbath. And Paul in Colossians 2 could not have meant to disobey the commandment that Yahweh established at the very beginning. He could not have meant that Yahweh nailed to the stake his laws and commandments. He could not have meant that because when Paul wrote it, that's all that existed con concerning the scriptures. So Paul could not have meant that. He could not have meant that you don't need to, to follow the new moon. He could not have meant that you don't need to keep his set-apart days, that those were nailed to the stake. No, he could not have meant those things. But what he could have meant, and what he did mean, is that he set apart and he nailed to the stake your sin, your disobedience, your curses, your sickness, your disease, your rebellion to the stake. And he released forgiveness to those that are willing and obedient, to those that are willing to follow him, to those that are willing to obey his laws and commandments. And these, Yahweh's laws and commandments, are a shadow of things to come. That's what Paul meant. He could not have meant to disobey them because disobeying them would meant you're rebellious. And re disobedience is the sin of witchcraft. 1 Samuel 15, 23 says. So, are you going to believe what Yahweh says? Are you going to believe Yahshua never said that the Torah was done away with? He said he came so that the law and the prophets were not done away with. He kept emphasizing to the rabbis that they were obeying uh, man's made laws, not the commandments of men, and their worship was in vain because they weren't obeying Yahweh's laws and commandments. That also means that your worship is in, is in vain if you are not willing to obey Yahweh's laws and commandments. And yes, we cannot keep them all. We're going to fall short. But praise Yahweh, our heart is not willing to fall short. We don't desire to fall short. We don't want to fall short. We want to obey them to the letter of the law and to the spirit of the, of the letter. But if we do, we have an advocate with the Father, Messiah Yahshua who will intercede on our behalf. And if we confess it, turn away from it, he will forgive us and cleanse us of all unrighteousness. That is the mercy and the grace of Yahweh, the mercy and the grace of the Messiah upon our life. So the question comes down to, are you willing and obedient to obey Yahweh's laws and commandments? Are you willing and obedient to keep the Shabbat? Are you willing and obedient to obey all that Yahweh says. If not, then you need to become willing. It just takes a second to become willing. As you see something in the scripture, and if you live your life according to the scripture, as you see it in the scripture, <clears throat> you then begin to step out in faith and begin to implement it in your life by the power of Yahweh's spirit. So, Father, we thank you for this word. I thought it was going to be short, but nonetheless, it wasn't. We praise you. We worship you, Father, for your Sabbath. And yes, Yahweh, we are willing and obedient to obey your Sabbath. 
And Father, any areas of our life that we are not obeying your laws and commandments, any areas of our life that we are justifying or excusing and not obeying them, any areas of not keeping the Sabbath that we need to see and renounce and repent of and start stepping out in faith and keeping it, show us, convict us, lead us, and give us the boldness like you gave Peter to step out of the boat and walk on the water to go to the Messiah. Have mercy on us. Forgive us, Father, in the power of your name. And Father, we thank you. We thank you for this word, and I pray that it blessed your people. I pray that it inspired your people. I pray that it gave them some food, some nuggets to think about, to dwell on. And Father, you receive the praise. You receive the glory. And Father, we pray for all those that are not Torah observant, that they would become Torah observant, that they would see the necessity and the importance of obeying your commandments if we want salvation, if we want to serve you, if we want to follow you and live in your kingdom. So Father, we praise you. Father, we love you. And Father, we bless you. And Yahweh, I ask you to, to make a way where there seems to be no way for the people. I ask you to open doors for them. Those that need jobs and better jobs, grant it to them. Give them favor. Give them increase. Give them health and healing, wholeness, soundness, completeness. And Father, we bless you. Father, we worship you. And until next time, may Yahweh bless you. May Yahweh make his face shine upon you. May Yahweh give you peace. May Yahweh give you favor. May Yahweh perform signs, wonders, and miracles for you in the authority and in the power of his mighty name. Until next time, shalom, shalom.